Foreign, I'm sorry to be harsh, but you're detaching from reality. Snap out of it, Gus shouted. This is real. No matter what fantasy you come up with in your head and how much you are like tour touring with the band, there are homicidal witches who are going to kill us if we don't do something. Very suddenly, the tears start swelling up. Foreign's eyes became a waterfall. As she started sobbing, she pressed her face up against Gus's chest and let out her tears spilled out. I know, I know. Foreign said in between sobs. It's... I just don't know what to do. There isn't seemed like any way to stop them. And I don't want to be helpless. Besides, I liked everything that's been happening. These past few months have given me some best memories of my life. And I don't want them to be real. I don't want to go back to playing at shitty venues that I hate. And not feeling like my life's going anywhere. Foreign's illusion was messy. But due to fighting back to tears with each word she spoke. It's okay, Foreign. Gus comforted. Even if there's a way that the you got here isn't real, the memories you created with your best friends during this time, this time is still as real as ever. And you're going to create lots more. I guarantee you. If we get out of this, you're going to still have me as a manager. And I'm going to help you with all your music as I can. I'm sorry, Foreign apologized. I didn't mean to scare you. I just didn't want to come to terms with none of this being real, because it's very scary not to. I know it's hard for you, Forn, Gus assured. It is hard enough for me too to have to pretend all this time, but I can even imagine how hard it is for you, thinking something was real for all these months when it wasn't. I'm the one who should be sorry, not you. I mean, do you think there's a way to stop them? Forn's tears listened a little. Now with with that, she let her true feelings spill. Let us think of what we know about them. How did you met the free? Gus inquired. They came to our Gus at concerts, and they were our biggest fans and asked for autographs, Fornit recounted. That doesn't tell much, though. Let's dig deeper, Gus said. How did they introduce you to me? Bridget said that her dad was a record producer, and that she would ask you to listen to our music to see if you liked us. Foreign said. This happened after they came up to the concert? Gus asked. I'm sorry if my questions seem repetitive. It's just we need to get every form of angle we can, since we don't know much. No, actually, what was the second time you met them? The next night at Lester's? Foreign remembered. Did they come up to you again? Gus inquired. No, we saw them. It gave Bridget her necklace back because she lost it the previous night. Foreign replied. Tell me more about this necklace. Tell me more about it, Gus said. We found it the previous night because Bridget had left it at the booth of Jack's. Dusk wanted to keep it because we didn't think we'd ever see them again. Then we bumped them again the next night and gave the necklace back. Bridget said she was so thankful we found it because it was so important to her that she wanted to give it to us. Aha! Gus's face lit up a little. If it were so important to her, why would she just give it away immediately? Things aren't lining up. It was then that the black-haired hex girl realized something that the manager had said. Oh my god! That's right! Foreign gasped. You know there's been something that bothered me about that necklace since the beginning. Well, it doesn't tell much, but I think it's to say is the necklace is part of their plan. Gus replied. Did Dusk bring it along with her on this trip? Yeah, but she hasn't been wearing it much, Foreign pointed out. She's left it in her suitcase the whole time. Foreign, I've got it. Gus gasped. When you said Bridget snuck into your room, she was digging through Gus Dusk's suitcase, right? Right, Foreign said before leaving an empathy. That must have been what she was looking for. But if she wanted the necklace so bad, why she did give it to Dusk in the first place? And why did she just said to her to give it back? I don't know, Gus admitted. It doesn't tell much about our plan, but I am almost positive that that necklace has something to do with it. Perhaps it's some sort of charm. Bridget did say it's a good luck charm. Maybe it's a really bad luck charm, though, Forn exclaimed. We should keep Dusk from wearing it? I'm afraid not. No, unfortunately, Gus responded. We don't know if that necklace is unsafe for Dusk, but I think it will be even more unsafe for us all. If we tried to keep her from wearing it, 
it's only going to make Dusk, well, and possibly the witch is suspicious. It's a hard decision to make, but I don't think we can risk it. So what do we do then? Foran asked. What's our plan? I don't think our plan should be doing anything. But we sh we do know don't know is that they have planned right now. But we need to do is with the necklace. At first, I thought we could come up with a grand plan to stop them, but I feel that maybe it, that isn't our best course. We've still got a small piece of puzzle, and maybe if we could figure out more of it, so our plan to stop them could be even more a bit informed. I say we should just try and watch them and see if they reveal anything more about themselves. Gus said, even though if they were sane, because you were observed and them, um, and presumably, if they weren't reading our minds right now, they'll confront us or do something to punish us. I guess all I can say is, we don't need to test out the extent of powers by waiting to see if they knew about this meeting. If they don't, perhaps we can meet again, two nights and evaluate. If we hadn't learned anything, we can reevaluate and make another plan. Okay, that sounds good. I guess, Born said. The uncertainty of their plan was to put the black-haired goth on edge, but she supposed she could agree with Gus as the best plan was to wait a tiny bit longer to make the plan informed. They were about to figure out about the necklace was a piece of puzzle, so perhaps they could uncover more. Okay, do you want to meet again in two nights when we're in Chicago? Gus suggested. Four and five were about it for a moment, weighing on the options and potential dangers in the green. Yeah, Ford finally said. Twelve blocks away? A smile manifested on Gus's face, followed by a nod. Twelve blocks away. Good night. Good night, Gus. Foran smiled. Thank you. Foran had feared about bumping into the witches on the dark trek back to the hotel room. In the middle of the night, but thankfully she hadn't. She snuck back to her bedroom as quietly as a mouse and crawled back into her bed without noticing she was gone. She had slept hard the rest of the night, probably from sleeping it so poorly the previous night. So she also felt a little bit calmer, but just a little. Her talk with Gus last night helped her, her feel like she wasn't at least alone in this, even if it was still terrifying to be under control of witches and to come into terms with all this being fake. Ford stretched out of bed, and when her heart jumped, she saw Luna was still in the room. Typically, she was the last one in the room, so in fact, she had been up so late, she was particularly surprised and Luna was still there. Good morning, Luna greeted. Did you sleep well? Yeah, like a rock, Foran replied. Oh, good. I heard you leave the room in the middle of the night. I was worried you hadn't, Luna said. Foran's heart leaped even more now. She scrambled to believe an excuse. Oh, sorry, I was so thirsty, so I went to get a bottle of water from downstairs. I hate the tap water here. Foran quickly pulled together a fib. Why are you apologizing? Luna assured. Yeah, the tap water is awful here, but I don't blame you. Foran admittedly hadn't even tried Annapolis tap water but she was the truth that unintentionally lined up with her lies. I'm just about to head to breakfast, Luna said. Are you coming or do you want to get ready first? Yeah, sure, I'll come to breakfast with you. Foran knew her response came off a little awkward, but she was still feeling having to lie to Luna. She hated lying, but she was surprised that Luna had noticed her leaving. That also brought up more frightening thoughts. What if someone else held her? Dirt? What if Bridget, Nia, and Sam heard her leave? What if Dusk heard her leave too, and brought up the breakfast, and made the witches suspicious? Foran took a deep breath when she saw Bridget, Nia, and Sam sitting at breakfast together. Thankfully, Dusk was with them, which prevented the witches from making things uncomfortable for Gus. Or at least, overly uncomfortable. As Bridget didn't seem to have any reservations about rubbing the whole I love you thing in the face the other day, when everyone was around. Good morning, Foran and Luna, Bridget exclaimed. How are you two this morning? Good, Luna responded. I'm really good, thanks. How are you? Foran inquired. I'm doing fantastic, Bridget replied, still in over-the-top voice. And we're just think talking about our plans for the day, Sam said. Ah, yes, Gus replied. We're planning on taking a walk by the Central Canal and then heading to lunch somewhere, and then we can head to the zoo in the afternoon. Sounds good to me, Luna responded. Yeah, that will give us a little early time for dinner and head to the National Center early, Dusk agreed. That must have been where they were playing the whole night. Foran felt bad for not remembering the name of the venue they were playing, but her life being put on danger due to the homicidal witches made it felt like a reasonable excuse. All right then, then we're set, Foran said, 
as she picked up a bowl of coca puffs and picked up a jug of milk that was right next to. She quickly gagged it and then put it down as she noticed the expiration date was five days ago. Thank goodness she hadn't poured any. Forn hated dry cereal, so she lifted her bowl up and was just about to pour it back in the container. Oh, no, 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 Sam scolded with a playful tone. You pour, you eat it. Sam does have kind of a point, Forn. Dust chimed in. It's kind of gross for the next person to eat the cereal I've already poured. Fine, Forn sighed, as she sat down and began eating her crunchy, dry cereal. She tried to eat it as quickly as she could, while chugging some coffee down the gross flavor. Oh, hey, Forn, can I talk to you for a minute after breakfast? Bridget asked. Forn nearly choked down with a spoonful of cereal. This hadn't meant Bridget for her thoughts last night, night talking to Gus. Uh, sure, you can tell me what it is right now, if you want, Forn offered. She knew Bridget would never take her up on it, but she was so desperate to not be alone with Bridget that she'd say anything of it. No, that's okay. I just don't want other people around the hotel to hear. I can follow you back up to your room if you want. If you're going back up there, that is, Bridget indirectly inquired. Um, Forn felt trapped. She had already told Luna that she was going back up to her room to get ready. So suddenly, so saying it would create an uneasy suspicion that could put her in danger. Yeah, I am. Okay, great, Bridget said. Forn slowed her cereal by eating peace significantly, but unfortunately she had a few bites left. She supposed talking to Bridget was inventable. So she took the last bites and stood up. Okay, Bridget, I'm ready, Forn said. Great, I'll be back, everyone, Bridget informed, as she and Forn headed towards the elevator together. So have you been enjoying this tour, Forn? The friendly small task frightened Forn more than anything. It felt like Bridget was trying to make things nervous by drawing out the interaction with the people as possible as to what they wanted to discuss. I've been really liking it so far, our Forn replied. She figured she'd play along with the witch's game until they got to their room. It's been a little nerve-wracking for me being in front of all those people and all, but you get used to it. Well, you know that fear can be a good thing, Bridget cryptically said. It motivates you to remain disciplined, which is good if you want to remain grounded. You know, like we've talked about with all this Wicca stuff. It freaked Forn out that Bridget was still acting like the big revolution. That night didn't happen at all. It was all the witches were trying to confess to her and confuse her more than branding the divide between the two realities of the Hex Girls being famous band and all this being manipulated. Forn was supposed to use her best weapon, was continued to play along. Yeah, we should do another one of these rituals someday. That one was pretty fun, Forn finally responded. I'd love to. You just tell me when you are. Bridget said, a slight smirk on her face as she entered the elevator, as she knew she was being a creepy psychopath. But Forn wasn't going to let a simple mind trick frighten her. How have you been doing? Forn asked. Bridget wasn't really the only one to rely on creepy mind tricks to throw her off. I'm sure just going to a new city every night has to be a lot for you, Sam and Nia. And I've been a little concerned about you, actually. Oh, I've been doing good. I've actually been enjoying traveling a lot more than I thought, Sam... Nia and I all agree that traveling has been a really good timing to take in the lives on the direction we want to be. If you know what I mean, Bridget said with a hint of creepy smirk. A chill went down Forn's spine as the elevator doors opened with a ding. It was seen Bridget wasn't the only one trying to confuse her by acting like the night that she had found out their secret never happened. But she was also not going to throw down the creepy little hints that the fact that they were just only witches and only overall's plan. If Bridget was the only one being creepy, then it was revealed that all needed to Forn, the actual revolution must be terrifying. No, 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 Forn. That's not what she wants you to think. She's trying to scare you. The black-haired goth pushed that thought from her mind. Thankfully, the awkward conversation would not last much longer, as they were nearly at Forn's room. Forn pulled out the key from her pocket and, unlo and unlocked the door. Sorry, it's a little messy. Forn apologized. Noticing Dusk's clothes from yesterday were still on the floor, which was a little silly, saying that someone who had threatened to torture her, but she didn't know exactly what socially acceptable response from a homicidal witch. So, I overheard your conversation yesterday, Bridget admitted. Her voice wasn't evil or sinister. This comment made Bridget's voice tone sounded ugly casual, which was perhaps more frightening than she had in a cruel voice. Okay... Forn said, trying to keep her composure not to freak out. What are your thoughts? Well, I know I can't. we can't let Luna leave the band, 
Bridget respond to foreign surprise. She was sure Bridget was talking about the conversation they had last night with Gus. But that must have been because they're talking about the conversation in the walk in the afternoon. The plan was to make you famous, Ban. And that's not going to work if you split up. She's not leaving, though. At least I don't think so. She just doesn't like touring. Foreign elaborated. I heard your conversation. She said she didn't like touring. It was overwhelming and she didn't like this kind of life. Trust me. This is how it's going to start with every band breakup. She's going to leave, Bridget replied, taking back black tennis shoes off and stay on Dusk's bed. Not every band, though. Luna would never leave us, Foreign defended. Well, you'll just have to convince her not to leave, Bridget demanded. We can't risk her leaving suddenly. What do you want me to say to her? It isn't going to be more suspicious if I randomly tell her not to leave if she's leaving. Foreign didn't understand Bridget's motivation here. It makes no sense for her to worry about something that probably would not happen. Working into a conversation somehow, if she ever does leave the band, you'll end have to end your friendship with her. I recommend you try something really convince Dusk to be on your side too. Bridget elaborate. No, that's a fusical. Foreign instinctively cried. Before she realized what she could have done if she hadn't. I mean, I don't want that to do that. Luna's my friend. She's not leaving the band. And if she did, I'm just not going to talk to her again. I'd be very sad, but if she's compelling a reason to end the band, I understand. Well, if you don't, I've got ways of making you guys do it anyway. We could torture you, Gus. Or after we're done with our plans, we can make you go down history humiliated. Check out this song we wrote for you guys. Bridget then take out a folded piece of paper and note from her pocket, handing it to Forn. We've been more than happy for Gus to release it for you. Once you guys carried out our plans. We got packs and snacks and lots of stacks of snacks. Foreign cried out in outrage. I can't sing this shit. We'd be laughed at at the music industry. Well, you then you better do what we say. Bridget folded her arms. Foreign sighed. She was stuck. At least for now. She had to do whatever they said. Or they could torture her in many ways. It's far worse than forcing her to sing about big snacks of... Stack, sacks of snacks. Okay. I'll say that stuff to Luna. Can't it can't can it be in front of everyone or does it have to be private? Far inside. You can do whatever you want. Just make sure it's done by the end of the day. We can't risk waiting too long to have Luna deciding to leave. We need to stop whatever thought process she's having before she makes a decision. Bridget reasoned. Why can't she just use her powers to make it stop if she leaves? Foreign inquired. Well then She'd know we're witches, and now she can't know that. No one except Gus was supposed to know that. You shouldn't even know it, but you decide to stick your nose where it doesn't belong, Bridget snarled. Besides, it's fun to torture you and make you fun stuff against your will. Forrest's heart sank. She felt so heart hopeless between from Bridget's words. But there was nothing she could do, at least for now. Okay, can we go back down and meet the others? Bridget smiled sweetly. Lee, Foreign felt like she was dealing with a real-life Jekyll high and high. Well, anything you want to talk about? Foreign sighed as she held up the open door for Bridget. Foreign had planned to get ready, but quite frankly, she didn't want to sit around in that room and have Bridget wait for a while as she got ready, especially not after that Bridget made things so uncomfortable. No, you've done a good job keeping your mouth shut. Just keep doing what you're doing like a good little bitch. Bridget's vocal got higher, as if she were talking to an animal. Very patronizing, patting Foreign on the head. It felt so incredibly demanding to Foreign. The rest of the elevator ride downstairs was in silence. Foreign felt so disgusting that she felt like she wanted to try and play a game of making an ideal conversation with someone who was behaving so cruelly to her. When they got back to the ground floor... The others were still at breakfast at the nearest to the elevator. Hey, are you guys ready to go? Luna asked. Foreign thought about just saying something to Luna now, but she figured it would only raise suspicion if she brought it up right after Bridget said to her to talk to Foreign. She hated to having to do things to protect those awful crones, but Foreign comforted herself with the thought that it was only temporarily until she and Gus came up with a better plan. It only took about five minutes to get to Central Canal, the canal was absolutely breathtaking. A large body of water stood in front of them, which stretched what seemed to be like miles. 
they appear to be mo most in the path all the way around the Carnell, which you can easily get down by walking a large staircase in the parking lot. Do we want to split up again? Bridget inquire. Nia, Sam, and I go in one direction, then Gus, Dusk, and Luna and Foreign could go together. Although she didn't understand Bridget's motivation on putting them together yesterday, now she understood clearer than ever. Bridget was trying to get Foreign to talk to Luna. Sure, Luna said. I loved our chat yesterday. Okay, we'll meet you guys halfway around the lake, Nia said, as the three began in their direction. Foreign inside and inhaled. Surely if Bridget was able to overhear the conversation yesterday, she'd be listening to see if Foreign had something to say to Luna today. She figured that she'd just get it over with. Hey Luna, I was thinking about you were talking about yesterday about leaving the band at all. Foreign stuttered. She had no idea to say this. I was wondering, do you think we could still be friends if one of us left the band? Of course, Luna replied. Our friendship started long before we released our music. So I don't know why the band would be ending would change that. Shit, that only made things harder. How do you both feel about Luna asked. Foreign had to say it now. If not, it was what she really felt. I don't know if I agree, Dusk said, to everyone's shock, particularly Foreign's. I mean, I get supporting your friends and all that, but if you're leaving the band meant it ended and we aren't famous anymore, that would really hurt. Like, it would be hard to forgive because you'd be ruining my success well, and that seems selfish to me. Thorne felt so horrible for herself for this because Dusk's comment was awful. The tiniest part of her was happy that Dusk said that so she didn't have to break Luna's heart herself. What? Luna shrieked. Luna's raisin voice was quite a bit on common occurrence, so both Foreign and Dusk's faces display looks of shock. You're saying that you wouldn't support me if I had a limitation reason to leave the band? I mean, I get it'd be hard, but I'd feel horrible if I did, but I think you could at least be a bit understanding. Unless I thought I was making the decision that it would be harmful to my well-being or happiness. What about me and my happiness? Dusk argued. Someone leaving the band feels like a collective decision, because it will affect all of us. So, you're saying that if I felt really bad for my mental health and wouldn't be in the band anymore, wouldn't you support my wishes to leave? Luna argued. Oh, fame, I'm not saying that, Dusk snapped. I'm just, just saying that leaving all those effects on us, then we need to make a decision together. We're really famous right now. So we need it to be very good reason if you wanted to leave. Thousands of people are counting us on us, you know. Oh, fame, 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 Luna yelled. That's all you ever think about anymore, is it? So you'd rather be more famous than care about your own friend's happiness? You're not listening to me, Dusk growled. Girls, calm, Dusk said. Please calm down. Dusk, it doesn't mean you're being very supportive. I agree with Dusk that you should talk about something like that before ending the band. But I also agree with Luna that each of your happiness and mental health should be above it and, affect, and not affecting your fame. 